This is a vortex tube. It has no moving parts, but it has an inlet nozzle to which we can attach a compressed gas tank. For this demonstration, we'll be using compressed air and two outlet nozzles, one of which has a centrally blocked orifice and the other of which has an orifice that's open only at the center. We've already seen how we can use temperature differentials to induce a gas to do work. Remember the Stirling engine? So, if we contemplate the reverse, we ought to be able to do work to induce a temperature differential. We certainly know that that is true, because that's precisely what air conditioners are designed to do. But vortex tubes are not the most efficient example of an air conditioner, and they require compressed air, or some other gas or fluid, so they're not as commonly encountered. Nevertheless, let's see what happens when we measure the temperatures of the gas exiting the opposite ends of the vortex tube, which we'll measure with these two thermocouples. I'm going to turn on the computer, which is connected to the thermocouples, and it's recording the temperature. There's a blue line and a red line, and you'll notice they're very close to one another. Now, let's turn on the air. Look at these temperatures. The gas exiting the hot end of the tube is at 28.5 degrees Celsius, while the gas at the cold end of the tube is down to 2.1 degrees Celsius. Without going into all the details, the air injected into the vortex tube spins very rapidly, and it does so with little exchange of molecules from the center of the tube to the outside. Since the radius of the rotation is larger for the outer air mass than the inner, this leads to a temperature differential. The shapes of the nozzles cause the warmer outer air to exit one end, while the cooler inner air must exit the other. The effect seems almost magical when first encountered, but, of course, it's entirely allowed by the laws of thermodynamics, with work being done by the expanding gas dedicated to the creation of a temperature differential.